Friends, good morning. Father Charles here with the St. Michael Street. We are excited that you are worshiping with us today. If you can, come join us next Friday and Saturday out at Sesquicentennial State Park, primitive site number two. We are going to be camping out both nights, have a fireplace, have some s'mores, some storytelling, and some good fun together. Come join us for that, spend the night, or just come and hang out around the fire for a little bit. Feel free to invite a friend. As always, go ahead, text the link to this video, put it on your Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever social media you like to use, so that others can join us and be a part of what we are doing. If this ministry is a blessing in your life, please do consider making a financial contribution so that we can continue on with this work. This week, we continue our journey through the book of Hebrews, looking at Hebrews chapter 10. Now, Hebrews, if you've not been following along, check out the sermons in the past couple of weeks. They will help you understand and make more out of this one. But Hebrews is a book in the New Testament, so it's in the back half of the Bible and about 80 90% of the way through, right towards the end. We're going to be in chapter 10 today. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about one of my very favorite things to do, hiking. I love going out into nature, wandering into the woods to go and see things that very few people have gone to get to see before. It is, for me, a deeply beautiful and a deeply spiritual thing to strap on a pack loaded with food, water, shelter, a luxury item or two. I always pack a chair. It's totally worth the extra weight. And wander deeply into the woods is a massive luxury. And when I strike off for a little adventure and I find the trail gets hot and sweaty and I'm huffy and puffy as I'm going up the hill, and I think I can't go but one step farther, I'm reminded of the naturalist John Muir and some of the wisdom about perseverance that he offers. Now, Muir was an avid hiker and environmentalist. He was known for his adventures, even to an advanced age, and he made nature his home in a way that few people did. He would carry on up through the mountains, hiking and going through such steep and dangerous terrain. And even in the cold and the wet, he would press on. But when people would ask him, especially as he got older, how it was that he managed to carry all that equipment and keep going, no matter how difficult it was, he said, well, the answer is really quite simple. Six inches at a time. That's it. That's the secret. I take six inch little steps when the tough is going. Now, the odd thing is the average person has a step between somewhere like 24 to 30 inches or four or five times as long as John Muir's six-inch little steps. But those six-inch little steps, one after another, just going on and on and on, carried him to places 
unseen and unknown that few had gotten to go before. The secret to making it through the difficult terrain to places very few make it were little six-inch steps. That's how he carried on through the impossible terrain, and it is how we can carry on in our hike to heaven together. Now, in the church this past week, we celebrated All Saints Day on November 1st and All Souls Day on November 2nd. And those two days are related but distinct and different. All Saints Day is the day when we celebrate what I like to call those big S saints. Be careful about saying that too quickly. But these really holy men and women who have ended their earthly journey in perfect friendship with God. They kept making those little six inch steps and they made it all the way to heaven with them. These are a lot of people that you've probably heard the names of, like Jesus' disciples, Peter, and John, and James, St. Paul, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, Jesus' adoptive father. People like St. Thomas Aquinas, and St. Augustine, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Veronica, and on and on and on. But there are also people from the modern era, people who lived just a few years ago that you may not have heard of or not know as well, like Dorothy Day or St. Mother Teresa or St. John Henry Newman or one of my personal favorites has to be, oh, I just lost his name too, Swoopy Quake, it's going to come to me, he did Life is Worth Living, Fulton J. Sheen, there it is, Bishop Fulton J. Sheen. Modern men and women who lived the life, and when going got tough and it was hard for them, they just kept carrying on six-inch little steps towards heaven. Now, these big S saints are in heaven with Jesus fully now. And in heaven, they offer up prayers for us, and in remembering them, we remember their hikes to heaven and the little six-inch steps that they took as a proof to us, a way of showing us that, yeah, you can do this too, six inches at a time. Now, on All Souls Day, we remember all the faithful departed. We pray for the repose of their souls. We pray that they will have continued purification as they prepare to enter into the fullness of God and perfect friendship with Him. We pray that Jesus will be with them and continue to hike and walk with them six inches at a time as they do their journey on that perfect friendship hike, that they will persevere. Now, each of these days is distinct, but they are tied together, as I said a couple of minutes ago. Turn with me now to Hebrews 10. We're going to start at verse 23, and we're going to go down to verse 25. Paul writes this, So let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who is promised is faithful. Now, the hope Paul is talking about is the hope that Jesus, Emmanuel, God who is with us, is indeed with us as he said he is, and that he walks that journey, that holy hike to heaven with us. And when the going is get tough, he does six inches at a time with us, and when he gets really tough, he picks us up and carries us over the next obstacle. So let us hold fast to that. That he who is promised is faithful. We can trust what Jesus has said. And then let us consider how we may spur one another to love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day of judgment approaching. Now, if you've been following along with us in the past several weeks, you're going to hear some echoes of the previous sermons and what Paul wrote here. You remember how Jesus comes from heaven to be born of the Virgin, to live and die as one of us, to set us free from the power of sin and death, to set us free so that we can keep on persevering and taking those little six-inch steps towards heaven. Jesus comes like the oncologist of your soul. Use the link in the description. Be sure to check that sermon out. But he comes for you to tell him the truth about what's wrong what's hurting you, what's difficult, about where you've messed up, and to say you're sorry so that he can help you become better. Jesus comes as your redneck best friend, as we talked about in Hebrews chapter 5. Jesus comes to literally pull you up out of the muck and the mud. He is there with you, a little bit smarter, brighter, and holier than you, 
and get you out of the mess that you are in. He is there to get you up and get you going, to get you unstuck for that next six-inch step. It is your responsibility to cooperate with that. But Jesus is there with you doing the work. And once he has set you free, he has set you free so that you can be free to go and to do loving of God and loving of people. Remember from Hebrews 7, we talked about how Jesus does not want sacrifice. The prophet Hosea says, The Lord does not desire sacrifice, but your steadfast love. That you would love and to care for him. The greatest commandment, as Jesus teaches us, is to love the Lord your God with all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. And the second is just like it, to love God, to love your neighbor as yourself. Loving God, loving neighbor, the two greatest commandments to keep. The freedom that God gives you is not to sacrifice or feel like you have to or must or should do something, but it is a plea for you to love him and to love others. To take your time and your money and your effort in service of loving God and loving others, because of that is how you make those little six-inch steps on your holy height towards heaven. It is about every single day becoming a little bit holier, a little bit more like Jesus, a little bit better friends with him, and helping others to do the same. Now, the big S saints were really good at this, and we celebrate them on All Saints Day. But if you keep on working and walking and loving, you can be just like them. And if, like me, you hope to be a big S saint someday, but you think, maybe I won't be quite that holy, well, that's what All Souls Day is for. The big S saints have gone to glory, and they are praying for you and working for you at the altar of God in heaven so that you can take that next step forward towards heaven. It's what it means when we pray in the liturgy and worship together that we join our voices with angels and archangels with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We worship God together. And this is what Paul means when he says it's important that we come together for worship and we don't give that up as some have been wanting to do. Whether we join each other in an online venue like this where we are praying and working and hoping and worshiping together so that you make me holier and I make you holier, or we come together in a building someplace and do that work. When we come together and do that in discipleship groups and we read scripture together, when we read the daily office and we join with all the Christians around the world in our prayers day after day, we make one another holier and we encourage and give one another the courage to take that next six-inch step to heaven. And being in community together is so important because it provides that positive peer pressure to make it easier to do it. It's why getting together is so important and fun sometimes. Any way you do it, the gathering is the way we receive the blessing of the big S saints, and it's the way that us little S saints, people like you and me, help encourage one another. In doing that work. So happy hiking to heaven. Let's take the next six inch step together.